You are now listening to Good, Bad, or Bullshit. Hello, and welcome to the Good, Bad, or Bullshit podcast. No verdict too controversial, no personality too big, and no topic too random. Joining me today on this beautiful uh, beginning of summer day is the one, the only, Michael Hodgins. Michael, hello again. (laughs) Your radio voice is out in full force this evening, though. (laughs) I know, I know. I'm feeling good, (laughs) and when I feel good, I get... Radio voicing. Radio voicing. That's yeah. good. It's sure to drop by the end of the, the show. Um, but before I start talking about myself too much, I also have to introduce the other guest. One might say the lesser of the three stars of the show, Crofton <laughs> Steers. Crofton, I'm kidding. You're a star. Yeah, how come Crofton got slammed? Oh, because he was slamming me before we started the show, so I brought the beef on air. Crofton, say hello to the listeners. Hello, listeners. Hello, Michael. Fuck you, Bo. <laughs> hello. <laughs> right to the profanity. Oh, we'll allow it. We'll allow it. Let's get a verdict from the uh, from the judges here. See, the thing is, is in the iTunes allow. store, in the iTunes store where our podcast, you all subscribe to it, fellow listeners. Uh, we, I think, still have that E for explicit content. So every once in a while, I, you know, I got to use it. Otherwise, it'll go away. That's true. It's all about the value. Value is important to us here, right? That's right. Yeah. I'm just impressed that one brought it out. If I want to, like, swear, I wait till I'm, like, really angry about something or really excited about something. I'm a big fan of the casual. Yeah. Not yeah. fair enough. But not, not. The three of us aren't the types to be like effing this and effing like I went to the effing grocery store and bought some effing oranges and the effing lady at the cash register <laughs> eff her like we don't talk that way. But you know it's funny because I also heard you know sometimes uh, when I used to take like writing classes and stuff well when, back in the day yeah. uh, and one teacher would be like you know you should use those words sparingly because they lose their value and it's definitely when you hang out with those people who swear constantly and then it just. It means nothing when, when they swear. <laughs> You're like, ah. also, like, you use it sparingly to really add emphasis or say something, and and I think it's effective when you do that. But when you do when you do hang out with people that swear a lot, I don't know about you guys, but like I, when I'm at work, I don't swear t- too too much. Uh, and uh, I swore the other day, and people are like, "Oh, geez, Crofton, you never swear." And I'm like, "Really? Geez, uh, at home I swear all the time." That doesn't and, uh, sound good. Because <laughs> is it because Jesse swears a lot? No, no, no. But I mean, like, I'll be hanging out with guys like you, and uh, and it's just it's just <laughs> osmosis or whatever. Like you're you or start a bad influence, on, you're saying. Yeah, you take on the, certain behaviors with certain people, right? And, uh, you know, if I'm hanging out with my brother, we'll be swearing a bunch, right? Like, it's just – and I don't even realize I'm turning it on or off those radio boys. Yeah. It's, my dad does that to a humorous extent because also because he's old, it makes me laugh. So I'll go periods where I haven't heard him swear for a very long time. And then if he ha- happens to be hanging around with, like, I don't know, a tradesperson or something who swears a lot – He'll he'll turn it on like a hundred percent. He's like straight to like sailor talk of like continuous profanity. I'm like, wow, he can really lay it on. And then <laughs> and then if that person's not around, he just won't swear anymore. And it's like it's impressive. Well, speaking of turning things on a hundred percent, the three of us have a mission, as always, on the Good Batter Bullshit Podcast, and that's to debate a topic selected at random. And in order to determine that random topic, Mike. You have an important function in our group. Well, I have the space in my home to house our um, illustrious random topic generator. It's like an archaic machine that uh, spits out the random topics. But yeah, I'm here with it. It's all full of coal. The, the furnace is fired up. All right, let's get it running, and we're all waiting in anticipation. Green energy is the future, Hodges. <laughs> I didn't give you those solar panels for Christmas just to lay around your house. Ugh. I actually am thinking about putting solar panels on the roof of my house. (laughs) 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 That's not the topic for discussion, though, today. Today, the topic for conversation is circumcision. 
Oh boy. Oh. So this is where they you you yeah, the end of your penis or the sheath that surrounds the head of the male penis is uh, removed. Okay. It was, so that's this male is circumcision. The, yeah, is this yeah. a gender neutral conversation? I think so cuz I mean I think that uh, look let's you know, let's be honest, the female circumcision is genital mutilation. It's not like it's it's much more narrow in its scope and practice than is male circumcision. I think we're talking male circumcision, but if you guys want to open it up to the whole thing, you know. Well, yeah, I, I could see how it gets complicated um, because it's just hard to argue in any way, shape, or form that female circumcision is a good thing. Uh, so yeah, let's well, let's drop the female part. And it's also removing of a different. It's not the the anatomy that's being removed is different. Like. It's removal of the clitoris in uh, in in women, and that's you know the the pleasurable part. So it'd be like as if a man had the whole head of his penis cut off, and that's very different than the foreskin. All right, so let's just settle that debate here that we all think female genital mutilation is bad for very obvious reasons, and move on to male genital or male <laughs> circumcision. Uh, I I would go bad on the female. All right. Uh, circumcision yeah oh absolutely all right yeah. let's just let's just put the gavel down on that now. <laughs> like there's no we're not debating it it's like there's no case where that it, like i either of any of us would find that acceptable or and i mean i mean if you're a listener and you don't know what female uh circumcision is um as much as it pains me to tell you to do a google search uh because you may get all sorts of images that you will not like uh, I just you would just have to reinforce what Mike says it's not common um, is in Africa there's some countries and some some uh, some groups that, pr that practice it uh, it's received you know a fair amount of media attention but it is there's really I can think of no nothing other than maybe some sort of religious or tribal motivation to doing it, but there's nothing there's nothing good about it, and that's why we're not debating it. Nine out of ten doctors agree. Female circumcision is bad for your health. <laughs> All right. Bad for your health. Well, well yeah, I'm, just, I'm making a bad joke. Bad for your sexual health. <laughs> I'm making a jokey voice, but yeah. Um, All right, so then it sounds like we're going to debate the... We're going to talk some cock, Bo. <laughs> well, that's a nice, succinct way of putting it. Something I'm not familiar with, succinct. But, um, so are we sharing information about circumcision personally as a starting point? Yeah, I point? mean, I, I don't care. All right, well, uh, I'm circumcised, boys. Oh, and I have a mental image of your penis. <laughs> Is it circumcised? Yeah, it's circumcised. <laughs> Before, I didn't know. So I, I'd be like, well, I, I don't know that it's Bo's penis in my head. You also forgot to mention it's girth that you were... <laughs> no. Oh, wow. Well, you gotta, um, you got you to gotta describe what you're imagining for our listeners. They can't see. Yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm doing everything I can to derail the conversation. In all seriousness, I'm circumcised. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mike, you go next. Well, uh, and it's, it's fine. I was gonna say you should go next because I, I, I just I make an assumption. First of all, I'm not circumcised, uh, and that's uncommon among people of our age and our generation. That's true because I know that because I am circumcised. Yeah. Sorry, Ooh. ladies. Sorry, ladies. What do you mean, sorry? I don't know. Yeah. Well, it depends on the ladies. I'm like. It one way. Well, whatever. It honestly probably doesn't really matter for, them. but 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 it is interesting in that it is because I think it was very common just as a medical medical practice where it was sort of recommended by doctors. I think starting in I don't know if it was like the fifties or sixties, but it certainly was uh, just kind of a given that you should just circumcise um, uh, your 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 boys. Uh, and uh, and I don't know why my parents decided not to. It might have been just because, and there. There are I have heard that, and this is it's interesting how it sets in line what you choose to do with your own child because chances are if you're circumcised and you have a boy, you'll probably have that boy circumcised because it's sort of like how you know it's how you see yourself and you you, you know, we like to think of our offsprings are the same. And I have a son and he's not circumcised because I'm like, well, I wasn't and I don't see the need to do that to him, and so he's not circumcised. Um, but so so often those trends tend to continue. Whereas, um, so is the medical side debunked at this point? Like they well, still do it, but it's preference. It's not. It's cosmetic essentially. 
Well, the I think that there there are there are, there there are pros and cons to it from from what I've heard. Um, some pros are things like you if you are circumcised, the chances of contracting like HIV if you have unprotected sex are slightly reduced. It's funny okay. because that's weird. Yeah, it is weird, but it's because well, when you're circumcised, the the tissue on it's the head of the penis, I think it's called the glands, uh, it becomes scar tissue. So it's I guess just it's de- it's less um, I don't know porous is that the word or or like fluids are exchanged less because okay. it, because it's be so I guess it. But the thing is, it's not like it stops HIV, you know. But I know that they were talking about in Africa, they were encouraging men to become circumcised because it might help. Uh, stymie the, the HIV epidemic over there, uh, but it's not like the, the numbers didn't seem good when I heard them. It was like your chances are less, but it's not like it, it's no silver bullet for not getting HIV. It was like twenty percent less or something. No, it, just just to my like limited knowledge, I have no medical expertise in this regard. But it just doesn't seem like it doesn't seem like protection to, to like you know. If anything, you're removing your shield. By getting circumcised. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, when you're like, if you have a non-circumcised penis, <laughs> when you're like aroused and engaging, you know, in acts of intercourse, uh, you know, your penis is pretty much look the same. Like the foreskin comes back, and you can't even really tell it's there. Um, yeah. It's weird. <laughs> it's kind of yeah. a weird organ. The penis. Yeah, I, you know, I was told, and so this is all. This is anecdotal. It's not information with a capital I from an expert, but. Um, I was told that it's easier to maintain cleanliness of your penis with it. And I I sort of, like, my, my common sense brain says, is it really that hard? Like, it's not a hard part of your body to clean by any stretch. So, like, I don't see how it would be any dirtier. So it feels a bit mythological to me. But, like, that was the reason. You know, I was told as I grew up and realized that my penis didn't look like other penises. Why was that, or what was circumcision about? Um, Did you not see? Because I found that I was more like I had that impression of like because most boys my age were circumcised, so I was I felt like the kind of weirdo, which is odd because I'm you yeah. Know, that's how humans I think are. that there was a big fad. Like there was a, there's a certain generation where, like because you were saying it was medically sound advice for a time that a lot of parents did it, um, but I don't well, hear about a lot of parents doing it anymore. I, I do know um, you can and well, <laughs> for being if, if we still have any people actually listening to this episode who are like this is I'm turning this off to TMI. Man, shame on you. We're just t- we're having an adult conversation about sex. Yeah, I, I mean whatever. But like, okay, I've had yeast infection, and uh, you normally we think of women uh, getting yeast infections, uh, but if you're and I think that that's less common if you are circumcised because. You get yeast infection, like women get yeast infection, because it's just like a damp area, and it's the same if you um, have a foreskin. So it's not. That is one of the worst named infections. A yeast infection? Yeah, doesn't it sound like like the name yeast infection? Isn't that like the worst name? <laughs> well, it's because it, it's. Crofton, a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. Yeah, what would you call it? Like the. I'm, I'm just saying, like, it sounds kind of. It sounds like something that's been, you know, growing in your garbage, I guess. The, that sort of sound sounds like a lot of words that might be associated with some gross stuff, maybe. Well, it it, it is yeast. <laughs> it is yeast it yeah, is and that's what it is. Gross. It's, you know. But, I mean, look, the human body oh. as a whole is pretty disgusting. <laughs> like, if you, you know, how much bacteria we have on us and in us is like, it, most people would not be comfortable knowing how much it is. It's It's a lot. Um, like there's more cells in your body that aren't human cells, uh, that are that are bacteria cells. So in any case, I so that was the thing. You can get a yeast infection if you have a foreskin. So if you are circumcised, then the chances of that are pretty much you're not going to get a yeast infection. So that is an advantage. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> so. Um, thank you for sharing that. Like some people consider that information kind of sensitive or whatever. So yeah, people like, be like, "Oh, I know that too much about this," but I'm like, "Whatever." It's just a human condition. I like women get yeast. It's very fairly common for women to get yeast infections. I'm like, "Whatever." I just have more in common with women now. That's all right. Yeah, and um, it's also a good kind of PSA for listeners. Just you know, even for me, I never really considered getting yeast infections, and 
something to watch out for. I will tell you, just along the cleanliness conversation, because I'm sure we have other aspects to touch on, that um, I find, like, I often forget to clean my belly button, which has nothing to do with circumcision, but it's, like, kind of one of those parts of your body that, like, is enclosed. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. And it's just, like, you know, when I, when I forget that, it gets dirty. So I can imagine that, like, a, you know, a place like that, full underneath folds of skin that may not see soap or... You know, because like it could get dirty if you're irresponsible. Like, well, the the interesting thing is sometimes it's soap that might cause the yeast infection. Ah, it's a weird thing. Like your body has this like complex balance of like microbes and things. So if you use harsh soaps, it it, it kills everything, and then it it's like. Um, you know, a fertile valley for something to colonize. So if the yeast gets in there first, it's like, hey, there's no one here to compete with. And then you might get a yeast infection. So it's this weird misnomer of like, oh, you need to clean more. It's not necessarily all that. You need to like not use too aggressive soaps. And I mean, certainly it's not like your belly button having foreskin. It's not like stuff stuff doesn't really get in, really. It's just part of your body that's there anyways. Like I mean an enclosed space because I have an innie. So I'm just like enclosed spaces on your body are probably prime uh, farming grounds for bacteria, I, I so, imagine. So now we have, like, two points that are, like, you should get circumcised. <laughs> like, you're less likely to get HIV, though definitely not guaranteed, and less likely to get yeast infections. Yeah. I would say, and I haven't been participating so much so far in this conversation, and it has nothing to do with with uh, lack of it an opinion. Well, it has a lot to do with lack of an opinion, it also has a lot to do with lack of information because even though I'm circumcised or whatever, it's never anything that I've really given any thought to in life. And when when my wife was pregnant and we were expecting a kid, I remember at one point before knowing what the sex was, I remember thinking like, well, you know, it doesn't really make any difference if it's a girl or a boy. And then my wife said, well, you know what? If it's a boy, we'll have to decide whether to get him circumcised or not. And and then I said I thought to myself, oh yeah, I'm like I guess we just wouldn't, right? Like why would we do that? And uh, those are interesting points that you guys have raised, but I, you know, did no one make the hard sell to you in your family? Because you're you're circumcised. Well, I, so did, I you're, didn't open it to the family. Like I wouldn't uh, be. But plus, you we might did, ask your mom like for guidance on. Like you might have. You don't have I, to. Maybe but, if I got into yeah. that point, I. It just maybe didn't I would come have, to it, right? Because you have a girl. We found so. out. We, yeah, we found yeah. out it was a girl. It, it, and if we had a guy, what Mike said at the beginning kind of echoed a little bit with me because, like, as as somebody who is circumcised, the idea of having a mini me or having some, like, the idea of having a little boy in something being different from his father or whatever. I mean, that that could be a point of sensitivity. It could be a point of sensitivity for me or for him or whatever. Um, and that would be a bridge I'd have to cross when I get there. But like on on paper, I don't see really what the necessity is to have a circumcision. And then, so you're born a certain way, um, unless there's a medical issue or something wrong with you. I don't know why you would do. I mean. Uh, it's 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 an interesting thing, and other than just it being a, um, as you say, that you look the same as your as your as your father. One thing is, is it? it hold on, Mike. Like, hold that thought. We yeah. lost Croft in a second time. That's why I started talking. Yeah, I no, I know you're feeling space, but just like write down your thought, or just hold on to it while we sort out what's going on with uh, Crofton. Hello, Crofton. So where did I cut off um, there? I've dropped three times from this call. Yeah, we I, I stopped our conversation because, yeah. Um, yeah. I told Mike to hold his thoughts. So, Mike, because I'm forgetting him. Where well, did I was I starting cut off? To, like, where, where Crofton cut, it was almost okay for me to come in. So I started yammering because I thought he cut. But now I don't remember what my train of thought was. So <laughs> that segue. Well, what, where, did, where did I cut? Because I said other stuff. I, it takes me a long time to realize before I'm gone. I can, I can play it back for you if you like. Sure. It's probably helpful. Or, or whatever. I mean, that, that could be a point of sensitivity. It could be a point of sensitivity for me or for him or whatever. Um, and that would be a bridge I'd have to cross when I get there. But like on, on paper, I don't see really what the necessity is to have a circumcision and then so you're born a certain way um, unless there's a medical 
issue or something wrong with you, I don't know why you would do. Uh, okay, that's, that's, that's where right, I cut off. I mean, that's where you cut off, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mike, if you want to go, like, it's going to be hard to, 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 for me to keep talking and to sandwich that together with something like yeah. the Yeah, I know. You, you were pretty much closing your point out. And I, I yeah, thought, I was. You, so you're you, saying you don't know why you would do it. Yeah, or, uh, well, for the. Uh, um, so I was going to. Okay. Yeah, the only thing that was left out at the end was like, just because pe- I said, just because people who m- might might or may not may or may not have known better have been doing it for thousands of years or whatever you know yeah. like so uh feel free to uh to go and i bow you'll have to the thing is i'm i'm this is the third time i got booting off this thing yeah that kind of blows but y- well, you at least got most of that out um okay all right are we still recording or what uh recording audio right now no just i gotta start it up again yeah okay I try. I shut it. I shut it off so that I could play it back yeah, more yeah. often. Yeah. No problem. Um, so shall I come in, or do you want to? Yeah, you should. Oh. You should come in. Okay. Um, yeah. What you do? Okay. Do you want me to play it back one more time? No, I think so. I think I'm alright. All Just right. tell me when. Alright, I'm gonna go now. Okay. Countdown. Well, yeah. Uh, why? Why would you do it? And and that is what like because. It does cause pain. Like, let's face it, having your uh, foreskin removed is painful. And so if you're a baby, uh, that's no less painful. The only possible advantage is that you don't remember. Like, certainly you guys can't recall being circumcised in all likelihood. I assume it was when you were babies. Uh, Yeah, it was when I was babies. I didn't have an adult circumcision. (laughs) Well, people do. I know someone who has. But... um, Oh, really? I'm not looking down on it. I just I can imagine that it's no. got to be. Well, here, well, here's the yeah. thing. So, so I now I'm so I'm not circumcised, and the idea of being circumcised now would be like, oh god, that would be so painful. Not only because of the fact that you're just having uh, something cut off of you, which is like a kind of you know cringy feeling to begin with. It's the fact that like the head of your penis is very sensitive. Like if, if I were to, I could not walk around all day with like my foreskin pulled back. I would be extremely uncomfortable because it's like, it's just like sensory overload. And uh, so to do that to a baby, and, and I think so, because there's a period of healing where, you're, where your body has to be like, wow, I don't have this sheath anymore. So it needs to, it needs to become scar tissue. And that doesn't happen in one day. In fact, I recall there was an episode of you guys ever watch Married with Children? Oh yeah, <laughs> where, Love and where, where Bundy Al Bundy gets yeah. circumcised for some reason as an adult? <laughs> oh, I I don't remember that one. It's fun, and you just see he comes home and he's wearing like this <laughs> super loose fitting hospital gown and like going oh, oh, because essentially you can't have like even like material like wisping against your newly circumcised penis would just be like. It's too much. Like when you're when you're engaging in sexual intercourse, it's very ple- it's maybe perhaps more pleasurable. It's full of nerves. Like it's yeah, it's just like a very nerve dense area. So yeah. and then it's not used to being exposed. So it's like too much when things are always rubbing up against it. So sure. if you do that to a baby, you're caught. You're. It's like you have to make the decision, even though the baby won't remember it. It will be very painful for that baby, and. So it's one of those things like you don't remember it, so it's like it never happened. But at the same time, you still have to do this thing to to your child and watch it be not pleased about it for a while. And then the other thing, now I don't know if this is true, but so uh, Ivan has a cousin who's a little bit older than him, okay. and he is circumcised. And uh, his mom was telling us about baby erections. And uh, and she was like, "Did you hear about baby erections?" And I was, I didn't really know these happen. Like baby erections, like apparently they happen. And uh, so Ivan has not had any baby erections. <laughs> is it only is it only babies who are circumcised? Well, that's what I wondered, and I wondered if like because the thing is, his essentially, you know, the, the the sexually sensitive part of his body is now exposed, and it's very sensitive. So any like rubbing, you know, that happens when you're cleaning and whatever, might <laughs> I don't know. Maybe now maybe. It, like that's why I say I have no clue. I might be completely wrong. Maybe lots of babies with foreskins get baby erections too. But I'm certainly glad Ivan hasn't had any baby erections yet because it's just like I mean it's a thing. I guess baby it happens to babies. So oh. what are you gonna do? But in any case, I'm just like it, it is like you're exposing that sexually sensitive area, and 
Yeah, it's just, uh, it's weird, but I'm, I'm for us it was an easy decision because I, did, I didn't have for to do nothing was yeah allowed to allowed my son to be the same looking as I I am. But if if I if I it was important to me, um, and I don't know that it honestly would be. I think the whole thing is kind of like whatever, do it or don't. Ultimately, I don't think it's that advantageous See, or disadvantageous um, either way. See, for me, I, I would I, I have this general sense of worrying about relatability, I suppose. Uh, like, there's well, very I mean, little to it, but if he has a problem that's somehow unique to, like, an uncircumcised penis, I might not know how to help my child. So, like, that's something I... I think that's a legit... That, that's a legit concern. It's probably what people... A lot of people think when they when they do it, you know? like Well, that's... No, that is true, because I can recall at some point, when you're much older, my dad kind of, like, telling me how I should clean myself, because... Like a baby who has a foreskin, you you do not pull back that foreskin like ever. Um, but at a certain age, then you sort of have to know how to clean yourself. So I guess that's a conversation you have to have as a father. Well, to I'll, your son. I'll enlist you, Mike. You can come over and teach my kid that, please. Well, maybe you'll just have your kid <laughs> circumcised and then. Yeah, but I, I, that decision's not made for me, so I don't know. Does it cost money to have them circumcised? I don't know. I, I think yeah. if you're Jewish, you get what is it a is it a moil? There's like a profession. I think so, moil's the right word. Yeah, because yeah. it, it's partly yeah, it's it's very much in, entangled with uh, Judaism and it, as a religion too. Like if also you're Jewish, Islam. you are circumcised. Yeah. Oh, really? Eh? I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, and not just and not just is uh, other cultures too, um, and some uh, cultures. Actually, I was just listening to this podcast. Um, Stuff you should know, and they they did an episode on male puberty, and a lot a lot of puberty rituals, and and so a, a lot of cultures, uh, you are circumcised when you're like thirteen or something, and I'm like, wow, that's that's not a pleasant. But, but, it, <laughs> but it's like it, it's probably um, culturally, it's like a rite of passage, right? Like there's probably a lot of ceremony uh, built up around something like that. I'd so imagine. So still would not be fun. It wouldn't be fun. Like I mean, it's, but if it you is... knew it was making you a man, you'd grin and bear it, you know. And like, yeah, in your culture, like you, you, you know, it still hurt, but maybe you'd feel like you gained something of value by. Yeah, probably. Engaging. Probably. You know what's funny is like, in in because in that situation you would be primed for this this happening. Um, it's funny because like, because circumcision happens to babies, and because my parents, you know. I had me circumcised. It was never ever a topic of conversation. Like it never came up. And ha so, how would I know about circumcision? Because we grew up in a pre-internet naivete, if you will. So, it the way I learned about it for the very first time was years later. Uh, I think watching the movie Robin Hood Men in Tights. Um, have you guys seen that movie? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty. Funny. I don't remember it, but okay. Well, it's a Mel Brooks movie, and he is, likes his Jewish humor, and uh, and Friar Tuck was like a, opens like a circumcision business at the end or whatever, and uh, there's there's this sort of lineup of adult men like going into this tent. Uh, and then you just hear like the the chop of a you know uh, what do you call those gallows or or, or no um gallows not gallows what's the thing there the chops the, the gu head guillotine chop. guillotine thank you you hear the chop of the guillotine and then you hear um uh, you hear somebody scream and then somebody else goes in and then screams and then the whole line runs away <laughs> or something and I it, but which was which is funny because we know what that is but at the time as a kid I was like what the hell is happening in that tent <laughs> you know what is what what is like free circumcisions and I so I I'm, I at that point got my my dad to explain what circumcisions were it's uh but it's, it's funny because it just doesn't come up. Well, it, that's a super interesting – and you remind me I, – I read an article about circumcision a, a while ago. But as you were talking about that story, it reminded me of the intro uh, the guy had written. Uh, and it was it was pretty interesting. So he was, said he was taking a class in university and they were talking about circumcision. And um, someone or the, the TA or the prof or something was like, um, you know, who who here is – um, uncircumcised or something like this, and this and this the, the guy, the author, he's like, well, I was, you know, I put up my hand and was surprised to see I was one of the few 
uh, people in the class that was uncircumcised. And then we talked about it, blah, blah, blah. And then he said he went home and he was like, and he said he was curious of what a circumcised penis looked like. So he Googled it and then it was like, huh, it looks exactly like my penis. And then he just had no clue. So he said he was uncircumcised, but he was circumcised. He just, as you say, had never been told by his parents and didn't know what it was. So had no reason to assume that this procedure had been done to him. So, yeah. and I'm like, wow, that's really interesting. Cause, Cause it's like, I saw, I saw kids in the locker room, like in elementary school and stuff, uncircumcised kids or whatever. And I just thought that whatever that was, I went to a French elementary school. I thought maybe it was a French thing. I don't know. Uh, I didn't realize that something had happened to me and not necessarily to them or that, that, you know, like I just thought different people, like there are black people, white people, English people, French people. I just, <laughs> I, I just figured penises look, you know, they weren't uniformly all the same. For as a kid, I yeah, never really I mean, realized there was an operation that involved. And that's like the funny thing is that you know circumcision is not a topic you see a lot of unless you go to like unless you're specifically looking for it. So even in this age of the internet, uh, you could miss it. Provided that you are not a uh, viewer of the porn, um, y you know, that, that could still totally happen that someone, it's not explained to them what the meaning of this thing is. So it's um, becoming a more talked about thing. I'm hearing more, and I, I saw this other thing, and I and now I did think this was weird. There's apparently some, uh, some men who are circumcised will attempt to regrow their foreskin. I've How seen that too. How the hell does that yeah. work? So essentially what they try to do is stretch like <laughs> you, it's, you put totally weights on it yeah weights on the skin around your penis like you would stretch your earlobe out you know with piercing you can do that over time to kind of stretch your foreskin back now and as someone who look like i have no interest in becoming circumcised because i'm not i don't really care but if i were circumcised i would not try to go back to foreskin and as someone who is not i would say to anyone who is circumcised don't do that it's not worth it. like, <laughs> what it's like honestly what what are you gaining and i remember and, that and the, sounds like the ultimate like rejection of your parents you know what well it probably is and well this guy did feel like uh, the thing that i saw i can't remember i think it was a i saw I an episode of penn and teller's bullshit they had, it they might have been honestly, but well, yeah. well, I don't know that it was there, but it was. I think it was a documentary. But the guy, the and he wasn't the only one. He did feel like something had been taken from him, and it was without his consent. And actually, that is something that that comes up has come up in this debate. It's the element of consent. So, like <clears throat> your your son, you say, okay, we're cutting you your penis off. That's that. And then, but that child has no has not given consent for that to happen. Uh, and, and that you know, and you could so. It is kind of weird, you, you know, at, at that age, they, they're not able to give consent or not, but this guy felt offended. And it is like the rejection of the parents might have been part of that, that he felt like they made this decision without consulting him, and now he doesn't have this thing. And uh, he did say that after kind of growing it back, he felt like his penis had regained more, sens more uh, sensation. Uh, hmm. But I would be surprised if that would have really yeah, happened. Yeah, because to me, that's the conversation that I've heard about which is but i think if you're circumcised you're you have you have less sensitive nerves so sex is less enjoyable for you as a circumcised person but there's no frame of there's no way you can try on a, a circumcised penis like to, to well, just know like you know you like have to talk to gonna... someone else and compare notes but i don't think that's very conclusive well, and once your once your the head of your penis becomes scar it becomes scar tissue, it's not gonna it it can't go back to not being scar tissue. Like so, what? So why would you waste the time, girl? It just I yeah. find that completely absurd. I would and just the, be like, accept and, yourself for even if your parents did it and you feel annoyed about that, whatever. You know, love yourself and move and on. The sex the sex thing, sex uh, sensitivity thing. The thing is, is that you can't really like. You know, you can't really compare the two because nobody has ever really been both, right? Yeah, like, yes, some people like if I were to get oh, circumcised I get, uh, as an, oh, yeah, as an, as you an adult, you should try it and tell us. Yeah, you so should do know. some home research. Take one for the team, Mike. Uh, no, but I do know someone, and I'll I'll leave that it. Makes uh, sense. You know, I don't I don't want to out this person, but I do know someone, and uh, that uh, he got circumcised at tw I think it was twenty six or twenty seven. Wow. He, and it was because he was marrying a Jewish girl, and uh, so he had to kind of like convert, 
and uh and he was like oh i guess i'm gonna get and so he had to get circus and i was like man really because it's not even like they're practicing jews from what i can tell and i was, and I was like well he did it and uh, I, i've never asked him like so oh, what do you like crazy. better uh but uh because oh, i brother, thought you were gonna my... tell us that he had information yeah. on oh okay my well, brother, my I'm brother legit also curious. got married to a to uh, a, a Jewish person, and they had like a very traditionally Jewish wedding. I'm assuming, I'm pretty sure that he is also circumcised, uh, as I think all three boys are. So it kind of it good for him because I guess he would have had. I never even thought about that, but he would have had to go through this thing. Yeah, Mike, uh, our dating pool is bigger than yours. Why? Because you can. Do, well, I'm married. Our I don't marriage care. pool. Oh yeah, you're married. Okay. You would have to make some hard choices. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, it, but it, in any in any case, like it is, it, like I, I mean, whether it's better or worse is probably whatever. But uh, it just it is more sensitive when it's not circumcised. Whether that's, you know, some men might argue like, well, hey, you know, if you don't, if you want to like last longer in the sack, maybe it's good to have, uh, you know less sensitivity down there i uh, yeah it's possible like i mean i let feel me like... tell you those two things are not mutually exclusive <laughs> <from> personal <laughs> experience what are you saying uh, about well i'll just leave it at that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, but, you know I, I, you know bo's number just a little psa that you know i think the the lasting not long enough issue can happen to anyone regardless of well your, yeah your can. Penis it's, there's a lot of other factors yeah uh, a lot of factors that are going into that <laughs> Um, um, accidents but, happen, but it, it is. I, I do feel. I do feel a bit like we're being comprehensive, but it does feel a bit like we're stretching in terms of a uh, because it feels like almost that it's uh, not a nothing issue, but that that even the most controversial stuff is not really that controversial. Like, well, the some people would really argue that the consent thing the, is. Yeah, but it, it. Yeah, but like as somebody who. It happened to without their consent. Um, I I have to say it's really not the end of the world. So, <laughs> so I mean, like uh, when that's the biggest issue surrounding surrounding something like this, it kind of it like it, in the end, this ends up uh, what what uh, sounds like a serious topic on paper. The more I think about it, I I find it ends up in the category of flip flops. You know, like. When we did that episode, it's sort of like neither here nor there. Some people like it, some people don't. Some well, people add it, some people don't. Some people just take it bit, seriously. And just people... a little bit more about the consent thing, like because it's difficult to think about consent when it was something that happened with when you're a child. Like so, it's very good that you that you're like whatever, I don't care, and <laughs> nor should nor should you. I'm not saying you should be annoyed about the consent issue. I don't think you should be necessarily, uh, but it's it is one of those things of like again a child can't give consent so because if you so so it's not an issue for you now for you now but if you hadn't been circumcised and now you're, or say like me for example all of a sudden my parents showed up at my house and he said you know michael we've been thinking and we think it's right to have you circumcised and i would be like get the hell away from me i'm like yes. get circumcised uh, i'm like why and they're like well we're your parents and we think it's our decision so we're gonna do this i'd be like well you know what go screw yourself uh i don't want to do that uh, because you know because now i am able to give consent and i'm comfortable with who i am and and again like I, it's not like i don't think you should have any ill will towards your parents but that's the way consent works so like as a child you're unable to give consent yay or nay and you don't remember so it's a it's a it's a moot point but it's one of those things of like you know like if you were to just fast forward a few years and have the same thing happen you might have a very different kind of view and what we do to children especially when it's elective like that's the bottom line like i mean obviously if your child has like a heart condition and they have to have surgery that's like a serious you know m medical issue but this is not it's purely elective surgery it's but there's uh, tons of elective shit we do to our kids like people have babies ears pierced all the goddamn time they wear the they some people will shave their baby's heads into weird weird stylings <laughs> or make them wear dumbass shirts or whatever like well that's true but, but, but i think like, some of that is, some of what we're talking about with the consent for kids is that it's impacting the entire life as opposed to you know wearing something stupid is like a week-long affliction and they are your legal guardians or whatever 
But if someone makes a decision for you that impacts you from 18 onwards, is that, but, is that yeah. a different debate? I guess so. It doesn't really seem like that big a decision. It's like the face putting baby pictures on Facebook and how we talked about that and how that's like you're making a decision for your kids for life to, you know, make their lives not private. Um, So that's sort of how I view the circumcision thing, because it's like it is going to affect you for the rest of your life. It's just your and my attitude, Croft, and I share with you is like we're ambivalent. Like, you know, we're like, eh. Well, I think I think my attitude is it's not it's not necessarily ambivalent in in that there's a ton of things that have happened in the past human history that we didn't know that we might have thought we we were doing a good thing when we weren't doing a good thing. I know my parents when they got all three of us circumcised, I know that they thought that this was a good good thing that they were doing, you know, it wasn't like this was the society that they grew up with. This these are the the um, uh, the, the, this is the information they had. And there's always these choices throughout humanity where humans make choices based on the inv- information that they had of at the time. And then you end up in the future and you're like, man, those people were dumb or why did they do that or whatever. But like for, for me, I just, I just like in the, the idea of consent is like, they're my legal guardians. When, when you're a child up until like 18 years old, they're taking care of you, they're raising you or whatever, and they're doing it with hopefully your best interest in mind with the information that they have at the time. Sometimes that best, in, those best interests are religious because they're very religious and they think this religious is going to, religion is going to help you grow and, and enter heaven or whatever. Other times it's sanitary or whatever, but they, you know they're they're doing this so so yeah it's it's not you don't necessarily give your consent but you don't give your consent for eating brussels sprouts either but they think that th- that's good for you because that, that's the information they have at the time so yeah. parents always getting all the blame yeah i, I just it, yeah and, and i i don't necessarily have anything more to say on that just that it is one of the um one of the issues uh, around this that that there that is sort of controversial like it's not um because some people take the and, and and these days the consent thing in general is like a big, a big thing. But but yeah, like I mean, I, I tend to agree that it's, I, I don't think it adversely affects people, um, who who are circumcised generally, um, unless maybe you grow up to like really despise your parents and then that's one more thing you can hang on them. <laughs> and they cut a piece of my dick off. <laughs> I'll never get it back unless I put weights on the end. <laughs> so one that's thing that I find right. is, is interesting. Right. Because we were of the generation of so many so many boys being circumcised, um, that I've had the experience of um, being with women who I've been the only um, man that they've seen who is not circumcised. Really, it's that prevail. It's it's the stats it's, for our age group are so. It's pretty high. Like it's, yeah. it's like most men you find are, are going to be circumcised in our age group. Um, I think is at some point it was basically your doctors like, yeah, get your son circumcised, and then now they don't do that anymore. But it's just uh, you know, like I said earlier, most men that are probably have their son circumcised, so it kind of continues. But in any case, I remember feeling insecure about that, and um, and, and bef- before that too, yeah, just because it, like had this idea that it's like it is like a. Um, that there's like an expectation and especially when you're not of the norm but then and i also remember being feeling kind of annoyed by that because it's sort of like i and of course this was just my own insecurity but <laughs> to to be uh to, to to feel sort of bad about myself or how i'm going to be judged by a woman but i'm like but this is how humans are born <laughs> like, yeah. this is how I, was, I, I like i just didn't have surgery damn it uh but that, it's interesting how not having not having surgery can make you different from your peer group. And I'm in the minority of Western men, or at least North American Western men. I think it's much less prevalent in Europe. Uh, but in North America, it's very prevalent from, for our generation. And that's just a little bit strange to be like, you are you didn't have surgery, so you're in the minority. And, and I remember, like, of course, now I'm like, I'm totally, I wouldn't change anything about myself, but I, I do remember feeling that kind of like, um, insecurity at one point and I'm like it's just a funny thing yeah I wasn't going to bring that up but like I'd echo that experience from the opposite side when it's like oh oh good you're circumcised <laughs> good like, yeah, uh, yeah yeah and like I've heard that and it's I'm like okay like <laughs> <laughs> like I, I I don't know how to react to that like it, it, I'm I'm like it makes a difference like I, I don't maybe it'd be interesting to hear from a woman uh, or some women about what why 
it, why it, some women would react that way or many i don't know what the number is this is all anecdotal but yeah no but i mean i've definitely heard that before where some, where some women say that they prefer a circumcised penis and uh yeah, listeners write in our lady listeners write in and you know tell us <laughs> Explain this to us, please. No, I don't want it explained. I don't want to feel bad about myself anymore. <laughs> so, well, no, because it has to do with bias. Like, you know pop, what popular thought is. It's got to do with bias. If no one had a circumcised penis, no one would care. Well, you know? but, like, it, it, but I, I think what it comes down to is, again, being normalized. So it, again, if you watch pornography, most men are circumcised. It's, it's rare to see an uncircumcised man in pornography um it works better for that medium or whatever so then it's expectations and then so and because most men are women come to expect a certain thing so then you're like kind of weird but uh i mean i my wife likes it <laughs> i shouldn't out her but she, she i mean <laughs> well, I hope that's probably so. just because she accepts me very much who i am but she she thinks it's a nice thing and honestly i think if i was circumcised she'd be like yeah whatever that's I great th- I, th- I think there are I, I think we're running the risk of running, making generalizations about all women or whatever. It's well, well, like, well, that's that's why. I mean, yeah. you said you, you've met a woman it's, who said she 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 was preferred it I, like that, and I'm just giving the counter example. Yeah. Uh, that. Oh, good. Yeah, and, and I believe it. It was just I shared like it's just that experience of someone actually even having a comment about it, like it's a good or bad thing, like that opinions it's can be held about time. Because I don't, it's I don't, you know, I don't rate vaginas. <laughs> like, oh, good. You know, the folds it's of the skin are correct. Well, this relationship I, will work. Like, imagine, never... imagine how controversial that would be. Men would be like, oh, I prefer a circumcised woman. It's like no end of relationship right at that point. Those words get uttered. Like, it's never going to happen. So. Okay, Crofton wants to do verdicts. Yeah. yeah, and he's correct. So let's uh, bring in the farm animals. Aren't you animals? All right, order in the court. It's time for the good, bad, or bullshit. Uh, High Council to deliver verdicts. And um, gentlemen, who would like to go first? I'll jump in. All right. You know, it's funny. I feel like this one is actually a fairly easy one, even though there is some controversy and I think probably some bias. I mean, like we've outed ourselves as being one way or the other. And I mean, it's pretty easy to be like... The way I am is the best, you know, and I, I, I can make, I can make, uh, you know, our arguments about being circumcised or being not. But to me, it it really is bullshit. So that's my verdict. And it's bullshit because it's being circumcised. I I don't think that there's some pros, there's some cons. Uh, being uncircumcised, same deal. Uh, so. Uh, I think it's like if it feels right for you, your family, you want to have your kids circumcised, great, go ahead, whatever. Or if you want to get circumcised yourself, go ahead. You know, if you don't, if you don't want to have that done, no big deal. So I think for me, this is a pretty easy bullshit verdict for for circumcision. All right, well, I'll take the next crack at my verdict. Um, I think it's going to be a short one too. We had a pretty uh, ample conversation about it. Um, you know, I'm sort of ambivalent to it. I know that it's going to be a profound question for me uh, when when and if I do have a child and it's a boy. Um, and I don't know what the answer is going to be uh, because it seems like either way is just fine. <laughs> you know, like it, So uh, I'll probably want to do a bit of research at that time. However, my sort of perspective on being circumcised, apart from the unanswered questions about sexual enjoyment, not that dwelling on it is going to, you know, go back, help me go back in time and change things. So really, it's unimportant for me to even waste time thinking about it. Um, but that's the only thing that I'm kind of curious about. Uh, all that to say, I think that um, circumcision is bullshit. <laughs> all right, and let's pause there, Mike, because we lost Crofton again. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, that's probably actually a good place for that to happen. Yeah, he didn't get the benefit of hearing. Well, he can, we can just play it back for him. It wasn't that? I was actually shorter than than usual. <laughs> but it was actually it was pretty good and succinct. I mean, we should all we aim for... we we. I mean, we really talked this one out, Mike. <laughs> like it's good. Like I, you know, sometimes I the reason why I'm delivering verdicts is I have this giant pile of crap in my head that I'm trying to spill <laughs> out in two seconds. You're back, Crofton. 
Yeah, yeah. Fuck this we, thing. We paused it. Both Mike and I deliver verdicts. If you want to hear them back, we'll play them. I know. I'm ready to go. Do you uh, know what they? Do you want to know what ours are? Uh, yours was bullshit. What was Mike's? Uh, Bo's. Bullshit. All right. For nothing, nothing new was shared for all the reasons you know I talked about already. All right. All right Can I go? The, tick tick ticks. Sure. Do a tick 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 for your editing. So two bullshits, eh? Uh, well, I can't say I'm surprised, and I kind of have telegraphed where I'm going with this as well. Uh, I just find that it, as a topic, as something that is sort of like a, affects 50% in this male circumcision of society, uh, it, it, it's something that we don't talk about that much, and, and really, like, it's a one, it's a one-time decision that, uh, it's funny. It has a bigger impact on your life than I thought. Like you guys both shared, and it what was interesting hearing, hearing both sides. But in the end, I just, I just feel like that there's, that there's not much there. It's kind of like it's an elective procedure that barely does anything. And uh, uh, the 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 thing that made me almost want to say bad is that it's one of those things that creates artificial differences. And when you guys were saying about feeling one way or another, I kind of felt badly about that situation where you'd be em embarrassed or something or, or it would you'd have you know personal issues due to being circumcised or not being circumcised so i mean that almost made me say bad but in the end i have to agree with both you and and, and say that circumcision is a bullshit well there you have it gbb listeners the eye council of the good matter bullshit podcast have come to a unanimous decision on circumcision as bullshit as yeah good... i don't think we've had a unanimous decision in a little while either it's been a little while and I, we don't have very many triple bullshits yeah no, well, i think that's run on one of our rarest you know yeah triple uh, bullshit because honestly this was like not it's not like straddling the fence between two things here and, and finding bullshit it is like this is kind of bullshit this is exactly what the bullshit category is yeah. for yeah well yeah well, we all agree on that but it's it's funny you poke around the internet a little bit <laughs> and uh, <laughs> what an unfortunate verb <laughs> and, and you will find people who will be like Oh, it's bad. Or other people will be like, "No, we should." Anyways, like it, it is a little bit more. It's, but I'm glad that for the most part, it's not something that enters most people's minds because you know you shouldn't spend really waste time feeling bad about how you are or wish you were another way. However, you are. So that's kind of like my view. It's like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Whatever way he turned out, you love yourself, you know? You'd be happier for it. This is a good pecker chat, boys. Oh, God. All right. On, uh, while we're speaking about pecker chats, you can send us an email telling us about, you know, your experiences with circumcision, your opinions. We'd happily read and share them on the air. You can send them to our email address, goodbadbull at gmail.com. Uh, you know, and if you've listened this far, but you haven't subscribed or don't know how to find out more information about us, you can find us on the internet at goodbadbull.com. There you'll find links to subscribe on iTunes and Stitcher, and you'll also be able to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at goodbadbull. All right. Um, I think that pretty much wraps up the show. Oh, wait, we got something coming in. Ah, the birds, the birds are coming in. Um, guys, guess what? We got an email from Tracy. Yay. Hey, Tracy. Yeah, dedicated no listener, see. Tracy. Um, so listen, Tracy says, Hi, guys. As the weather heats up, I am gardening again, and this podcast is what I listen to when gardening. So I'll have to side with Jess and Andrea and say that gardening is awesome. <laughs> I, I understand that some of the and comments I made throughout the show touch on some benefits and drawbacks but something that you did not touch on was the ability to grow foods that are not often found in your local store ah. i feel that many of the fruits and vegetables and even squash are available in limited varieties that most people don't know <laughs> that you can get purple potatoes and yellow bulb tomatoes gardening makes cho food choices fun uh, great podcast. Stop playing God, Tracy. Stop playing God. You're getting crazy. <laughs> great podcast. Tomatoes, Love listening. The Keep the topics coming. So a lot of warm vibes from Tracy. Thank you for your email, Tracy. And yeah. those are, you know, 
because I, of course we all know that I was right because I was the only one who said Guardian was good. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad about mine, to be honest. I think I was being well, a little bit on. of a douche. I think you guys just wanted to call it bad, but those are good points. Like, I didn't call and it bad, did I? You said bullshit. Yeah, that's more likely. Bo has a plastic plant. You have to bear that in mind. <laughs> yeah, like Bo, Bo, I'm not too surprised. Crofton, I was disappointed in. With someone who has like a bunch of raspberry bushes outside his house, who's like, meh, bullshit. Yeah. Were you <laughs> in the doghouse with Jesse for a little while? A little bit, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you have a high calling here. Uh, you got to you gotta be honest. You got to do Anyways, your job all, all to say, thanks Plus for listening. Have... And those are actually good points. I mean, like I should, I should get Andrea to put some good stuff in different weird vegetables in i thought garden. i thought they were really good points that we didn't cover so they were yeah, yeah. thank you tracy all Thanks, right Trace. um one last little thing i forgot to mention although you probably heard it at the top of the show we have a patreon page as well um if you go to our site good bad bull and click on support us you'll see a little video explaining what that's all about but essentially if you enjoy the good bad or bullshit and you want to become you know an invested community member help us support the show you can visit us on our site and find out how to support us for as little as a penny a month uh, you don't you know all you need to do is just pledge a little bit of support and every little bit counts so check that out now finally in the last of our uh, shout outs links to stuff that we do um, I'd like to offer Michael a chance to let our listeners know you know if they want to find out more about what he's doing where they can find him um <laughs> They can. I, I was, you know, I like. I was gonna say something about circumcision, but um, you know what? <laughs> you can find me getting my penis. They can't cut find off. me because I'll be in, in a private place. Because <laughs> that was better. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was pretty good. That leaves it up yeah. to the imagination. Yeah. All right. So you can find him in his private place, uh, Crofton. If our listeners want to find out more about what you're up to, where can they find that information out? They can follow all my, my cock talks and dick discussions on uh, my Twitter account, at Croft and Steers on Twitter. And uh, I also co-host the Exclamation Mark podcast with Bo Schwartz here. And uh, you can follow that at EXM on tw- uh, at EXM podcast on Twitter. Yeah, and uh, you can find me at Bo Schwartz, and I'm also on the EXM podcast. All right. Um, I think that about wraps it up, guys. That was... You know, we I, had a good episode last week, and this one's also hitting high marks for me. I can feel it already. <laughs> okay, it's, wait. Wait till you get this. I have an ancestor whose name was Big Dick Hodgins. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> and that's actually true. It, it, we have this book of, like, Hodgins history, and I was reading through it looking for baby names <laughs> for my son, and there was this reference to Big Dick Hodgins, <laughs> and they just kept saying it. And you're like, Big Dick Hodgins had several children, but I'm like, what? And uh, it's one of those funny things where, obviously, his name was Richard, and I guess he just always... My dad goes by... He's Richard, too, and he goes by Dick Hodgins, and as a kid, I always be like, my dad's name is Dick! Um, <laughs> because of the era, you know, the 60s yeah. and 50s, that was no one thought uh, somewhere along the way dick became synonymous with penis it it did anyways which is why you know big dick hodgins is definitely a humorous name today and i'd i'd kind of like being big dick uh, <laughs> big dick schwartz there's big dick schwartz coming down the street Everybody i wouldn't like cameras. it it would, it'd be like there's be too many assumptions about you yeah that you have a big dick that would be, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that would be, be the main assumption. Because but then it's either it's either that either a you do and everyone knows it, so it's not private anymore. And all the women are like, "Well, I don't need to go hang out with Big Dick Hodgins. I know what he's got in his pants." Or you don't, and then you feel bad about it because you're like, "Oh, I don't have a big dick, but my name is Big Dick Hodgins." Just imagine being in that room when the, when the big dick gets revealed, and it's like such a disappointment. Oh, it'd probably be like the it's most. Great, honey. I, <laughs> I bet Big Dick Hodgins had like the most absolute average size dick possible. Yeah. Well, it's probably big because he was well, a big he, lad. Not he was lad. your ancestor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's probably pretty average. <laughs> <laughs>